Hello my friends and welcome back to SnowRunner with me Mark from DadX and the mighty reliable Chevrolet. More reliable than mighty I say to be fair but we're off looking to help out this guy who's lost his pickup down by the river. We're cutting around the top of the quarry and I'm just demonstrating <laughs> that you can drag this fuel trailer around pretty much everywhere with you certainly behind this Chevy it bounces it clatters here it's trying to drag me down <laughs> it is heavy so do be a little bit careful on some of the ledges but in terms of uh, greatly expanding your scouting range to drag the scout fuel trailer around with you is certainly one method look you can see my diffs are getting a bit hot there because I left them on I'm, it's basically because you're going too fast with the diff lock on I used to have a short wheelbase Mitsubishi Shogun that got really angry if you left the diff locks on and started going too quickly it would start juddering and grinding and the turning circle was atrocious with the diff locks on but we had a lot of fun in it that's for sure we had access to a load of woodland and gravel ways and quarries and stuff we had a lot of fun in that particular vehicle anyway we've marked a little waypoint just to show us where to turn off and cut through the trees because as usual I'm trying to find a reasonably short route to get down there I'm not expecting much trouble on the mission a little bit bouncy clattery imagine this with the scout oh I found our friend the scout 800 I downloaded a Forza 7 a couple of days ago because it was really cheap like with a for having gold I think it's 15 quid if you're interested the Scout 800 is in there. I'm going to have to give it a go. I might show you the odd race on Forza. I quite like playing it. I play with all the steering aids turned off, apart from the one that kind of marks the corners, because I play in car, and until I get used to a circuit, I have a lot of trouble with traffic in front of you, making it hard to see the brake point until you've clattered into the car in front of you, and clattering around is not a good thing to do in that game. I also play with the driver aggression of the other, you know, the AI drivers turned on, so they'll clatter you and ram you off and uh, I played with them on expert difficulty it's good you can play that game with like so many steering aids on you literally start a race press accelerate and it does the rest for you you can even amazingly turn off the graphics uh, sorry the physics effect of sand and grass so that there's no difference in the friction so you can play Forza like it's Horizons which is a game I just found silly to be honest with you but I do like a bit of Forza I also like messing around with the tunes and it really does make a difference to how you tune your car especially the Manti roll bars which is a little bit exaggerated but <laughs> But you can get your lap times down if you play with your tune. And I also have to play with automatic gearbox because my fingers just get too crazy. They don't like all that um, repetitive button pushing that quickly in that way. I don't have a problem pressing the buttons a lot on top of the D-pad. Uh, so yeah, the controller. But when it comes to those shoulder buttons, if I have to do that a lot, that movement. It, oh, what can I say? <laughs> my hands have worked hard. But here in SnowRunner, we've got a slightly more sedate experience so we're down here we're going to leave the trailer just down here while we maneuver this guy out of his predicament and drag him out the mud and then we're going to reattach the trailer and tow the pickup back behind the trailer that's the plan let's see how well we can execute it so thankfully we can pick up the mission here because I think I forgot up there no maybe I did already activate the mission I can't remember it doesn't matter I could have done it here so if you're casually driving around the map and find this guy you can at least just grab him and go which is good we found that one annoying mission that i found and then had to go and trigger which i didn't like anyway this is easy he's coming straight out of there it seems like he's got fuel and he's all repaired you remember what a big difference it made when we were dragging out the uh the white western start that we took the fuel to allow him to be able to power himself as we were towing him rather than us literally having to drag him out so we've also got repair points and a spare tire remember in the chevy i think it's a very small amount about 50 repair points but you never know it could make the difference and it's there it also lowers the center of gravity quite nicely because it sits in the bed as you can see back there that crate in the wheel so i'm just going to wiggle around with this guy now get him where i want him so i'm just going to check now if he does need any fuel that's me no, he's fully fueled. That's cool. Uh, repair points. 
from my trunk repair supplies. Yeah, 50 repair points. Not a huge amount, but it could make the difference one day. And I'm checking them both. And nope, they're all good. We'll go. We won't ask how he got it down here and it got stuck and it still has a full tank of fuel. That question will never need to be answered. So now we can just get this guy behind us, drag us around the corner, get the trailer behind us and then get organised and make our way out. And here we are, we've done that manoeuvring and admin. We've got the pickup out here in the open. We've picked up the trailer, attached it, done a lap so we could loop behind and hopefully just look back not in anger but in hope and winch there you go we've got the connection onto him we'll winch him up a little bit close we don't want him too far behind the only problem we're likely to have here unless we find somewhere we just can't get up in which case we can always mess about taking off the trailer pulling the pickup etc etc till we get there is him getting caught on a tree or in fact me getting caught on a tree or the trailer getting caught on a tree <laughs> And I think during my return journey, I managed to do all three. But you just have to bear that in mind. Take nice wide corners if you can. Me getting a little bit confused with the gearbox, as always. It's when I'm in low diff in the low gears and I need to reverse. I forget you've got to manually shift into that reverse gear sometimes. It's yet to cause a disaster. So this little ascent here is no doubt the trickiest part probably. I want to get off these rocks. There you go. And you can see that marker on the diffs. They're getting hot. It's because I'm uh, I'm not sure if it's speed or kind of effort actually. Because I'm not going that quickly now am I? But they will overheat if you're putting too much effort through your drivetrain with your diffs locked. So just keep an eye on it. If you don't catch it in time, you'll take a bit of damage. They're not going to explode. I've cut a little bit. We've got over that hill. We're up into the thicker trees. We haven't really got far to go. But it becomes a little bit of a... Uh, ooh, <laughs> how, do, how am I going to get my train of vehicles and trailers through here? So we shall try. We've got, of course, the luxury of the autonomous winch. I have allowed that. So if it does go wrong... Certainly in this vehicle, we can sort ourselves out. The loaf may have one. I should probably check at some stage so I know how uh, overconfident to be when I'm out and about in him. But this truck has. It saved a little bit of time. It's not exactly a cheat or an exploit, is it? It's reasonably realistic, I suppose. And I do respect those guys. I, I see people who play this game as realistically as possible. I mean, I don't rush through it by using the OP trucks, but I also don't creep around everywhere in low gear doing five miles an hour because that's how they do it in real life. <laughs> I try to get a balance, I guess. Pragmatic might be the key word. Anyway, I'm trying to get through here. I'm obviously suffering from the length of my train and <laughs> trying to maneuver around these trees, but I'm getting there. I have very good bull bars on the front of this Chevy and they don't mind kissing birches all day but the camber again <laughs> is more dangerous than anything else I'm encountering here oh the trailer did you see that the, the trailer tipped on the camber the weight of the trailer then has tipped me over the camera has gone crazy and what was it I was just saying about that autonomous winch <laughs> We'll be fine, nothing to see here, so a little bit of tidying up. I think with hindsight what I'm going to do is maybe get, I've not got far to go, I'm going to get the pickup out and then come back and get the trailer. It is a little bit of a weird one trying to get this little train up here. So that's the plan. So we've got the trailer upright and got him out of the way. We're going to go back, we're going to connect our winch. I've been so engrossed in all of this that I've yet to notice. I'm wondering what's gone wrong with my truck. Am I stuck on a tree? And of course, no, I'm running out of fuel. This is why we bring the trailer with us everywhere. There you go. Can't go wrong. Even an old fool like me can't get stranded if you bring your own petrol station with you. Hey, eh? right. So there you go. The utility is demonstrated. And the inconvenience of it is that I've got to basically... I've got to cut along this hill to get up onto the road. The way I've come out is, is taking me straight up into all of the uh, the Armco 
the barriers across the side of the street so I can't get over them so that is the one complication it's trying to get around these trees and along this hill across this hill and there's the path maybe if I'd plotted my route a little bit more carefully I could have avoided that but as you can see we literally got this is how close we were to making it in one go anyway so we will not call this in any way anything more than a very very minor inconvenience and there you go mate there's your pickup full of petrol I could have nicked a few I wonder what would have happened if I'd nicked the petrol out of that and then delivered it because certainly with the fuel trailers when you have to pick them up and deliver them you don't get that if you've stolen fuel out of them they won't complete the mission you have to make sure they're full up I'm not sure about vehicles if they start full okay we're with the Tega now we're heading down to the lake south of the garage I have skipped out some of the bits of me picking up missions and just driving on the road etc just for brevity we've got a lot to get on with I'm down by the riverbank trying to find a way to get round the drop off into the water is very steep around this area so I don't want to go around the outside of the trees here I want to get the lorry reasonably turned and straightened just to drive straight through the gaps in the trees just to just ahead of me and to the left here so there we go jobs are good and we'll get there so this truck I'm certainly using it I'm not gonna just ignore it because it is quite powerful and it can get stuck it's not immune I have managed to get it stuck in the mud before maybe only once but it did happen so I'm basically just using him as the odd job man so it might not be exactly what he may be designed for whether it's scouting or in this case is picking up I think it's going to be a scout fuel trailer yeah there it is up ahead of us on the bank now obviously I can't attach that to the lorry but I can attach it with the winch and just tow it you will need to have it attached to a scout vehicle to hand in for the end of the mission well this mud's getting very deep but we've learned our lesson haven't we we're not getting too far away from the things that can give us a little bit of help to get back out now I actually think if you go out to pick up the mission in that yellow square in the mud it makes this mission a lot more difficult so I'm gonna have a little sit here I do think here about maybe getting one of the scouts down directly the loaf is lurking around we're gonna get him to a rendezvous point to hand in the mission anyway I hope you enjoyed the sloshing of the fuel tanks there so yeah we're gonna play this safe we're gonna come up here We can accept the mission up where you'd pick it up and then come and get the trailer. We're going to do it the other way around. So stay well within winch range of the trees in case things do get dicey. And just get as far down here as we need to go to get him attached on the winch. There you go, he suddenly got his physics and just drag him out. I'm going to winch him up to shorten the length of the winch. And then we've just got to get basically up this hill onto this track and uh, get him round towards where we can rendezvous with the loaf so we can go and hand in the mission which is up by the fuel station it's not far at all so it's just a question of picking a route up this hillside really this is one of the few um, Russian trucks that can have the flatbed on it and still tow a trailer the Western White Star can't I found that out by accident but it is a little bit of an inhibitor that you can't get a trailer attached to it I guess you can tow one around with it using a winch if you needed to as long as you've got another lorry to uh, attach it to to hand it in if you need to or a crane to, or a crane to switch the load over but here we are yet again trying to see a little route through the trees I'm pretty sure if we can get straight we're not gonna get the trailer hung up but the more we have to kind of wiggle the maneuver to get through the gaps the more likely that is I've actually let the trailer go now by accident that's me clunking on the controller and I cannot see <laughs> camera help where is the trailer where is it it's over there I can just see it through the trees can I get the winch on it in the lazy way nope not a hope right let's do it manually so the rear tow point on the truck we can just reach the hitch point up there on the trailer cool get him up close reduces the risk of him 
finding his own route over a rock or something and getting out of line. And we shall emerge from the nature in our beast of a truck. There we go. We must be pretty close to the, uh, the trackway. Yeah, there it is up ahead of us. We just got to get through here by uh, finding a way through the trees. So, yeah, I'm just being a little bit wary in case there's any stumps or anything just a trader can get hung up on. Waste me a bit more time. But we're out. Yep, yeah, we're out until the track. So we just need to turn right and meet the loaf up by the main road. So I don't think we're going to have any issues there. Not really use this track at all. It, once you've got to the garage, you've got the road around. So this one, apart from this very mission, seems a little bit odd. A little skip there in which time I brought the loaf down to a rendezvous point at the end of the street. And there you go, you can see him, end of the street, end of this mud track. But you'd also get a demonstration here of just how tough this fuel tank is. Look. <laughs> and uh, it seems to quite often, nine times out of ten, it ends up back on his wheels. There you go. Well done. So all we need to do now is uh, release that from the winch, attach it onto the loaf. And then we're going to need to uh, tow the loaf and the trader up there with the Tega. And although obviously mechanically that is not necessary at all, it just saves us moving trucks around. It's one of the things that really will save you the most time is just towing a scout with you, towing another vehicle with you, just to have it somewhere on the map. And we've got those missions down in the southeast corner of the map. The only ones left to do. I don't know what they involve yet because we can't see from the map screen. So I'm just taking as many vehicles around as I can. And all we need to do here now, just release the old loaf. I've left the loaf in his natty paint job. Just for... But it's quite jolly, isn't it? The Hot Wheels look. Just, just on one vehicle. It can be the one we go to the pub in. So we'll pick up the mission there. Quite a good reward, is it? Let me double check when we hand it in. No, it's well, it's not a bad reward for such a simple mission. But there you go. Don't forget, you can use a truck to move a scout trailer just by towing it with the winch and vice versa. You can drag the big trailers around with the scouts if you need to. And here, we, a little bit of roll reversal. As I said, we're heading down to that southeast corner of the map. Just to save really driving time, we're doing it this way. Could be the other way around. It makes no real difference. I haven't driven the loaf for a little while. He's still doing well. He's definitely the plodder of the pack. There's no doubt about that. And he does have a habit of when you've got stationary, just getting a little bit hung up. I think we see it two or three times on this journey maybe where he stops and just can't get going again you need to either change gear or just give him a little reverse or something I'm not quite sure what that's all about but he always gets the job done this may be a slightly unnecessary job it's practice for him isn't it I wouldn't want to tow well I don't think you actually could tow something this heavy the weight would just um, ruin it but correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you could move something, but that's not quite towing it, is it? And as you can see here, we've got to release the winch because uh, the Tager, which is powered, obviously, has caught up with us and just shoved us along there. So we'll give ourselves a little bit more breathing space and drag him out of this puddle. And there you go. There's one of the points where we're just kind of hanging. We're not moving. So if I just move it into the low gear, we get going. It's the only vehicle I've noticed that has that kind of hang up. And we're heading up, of course, to the area with that kind of nasty drop off. We've seen it a couple of times in the gameplay so far. And the point where the, uh, the fleet star took one of its tumbles when the camber caught him out again. But we're going to breeze through there. I'm going to cut ahead to when we're into new territory. Around the area where we found a Chevy that we could keep. Okay, we're heading down the hill now. And the loaf is bouncing. He's enjoying himself. The scout probably would have been on his roof sliding down the hill. 
I don't know quite how this vehicle, it's got the roof rack on remember and it is a fully loaded roof rack. It now is getting shoved along. <laughs> we'll have to unwinch and re-winch. But uh, yeah, it's a remarkably stable vehicle. Not bulletproof by any means, but reliable. You've got to like the loaf. If you don't, you have no soul. Right, where are we? We're nearly down to the river and we've got to cross the river to start finding objectives. We've got a little break here. Let me just see what's going on. Yeah, we've got to carry on down the path we've got to, down to that Lost Bags mission. It is a real pity that like, I can't get a little bit more info before we get here. I don't know whether I'm going to need a crane. Uh, and you can't fit a crane with the flatbed on this Tager. There's another disadvantage of him for you. But I brought him down here just in case he was handy as we were coming this way anyway. And it's cost us nothing. Maybe it takes a little bit longer. But so what? I just get to play the game more, don't I? I quite like it. Right, there's the objective over there. But I don't think we're going straight across the river. No, look, we've got a kind of a crossing point going on further around. So we'll go and uh, play it a little bit wise. And have a look at that. I think we can just leave the truck there. What I should have probably done there is switch back to the truck and switch his engine off. Because it is going to sit there ticking over now. Could cause a problem if we go back to him and he's got no fuel. But let's see how the loaf can get across this river. I've not been to this part of the map ever, ever before. I promise you. I did have a second playthrough going on very early on, which I haven't really had time to do. And I didn't get this far in that. I got about halfway through this map. But the loaf is away. There you go. He's got the all-terrain tyres on, not the mud tyres. Because the mud tyres are a little bit specialist, I've found. But we've got to cross there, no problem. That bodes well. I think if he we can get across there that easily no one's going to have too much trouble getting across there he said optimistically so now we can pick up the mission we discovered a repair trailer which is handy to have this far from the garage just in case we do need it so we have got let's have a look we need to pick up this mission lost bags what does this involve? Come on. I need to press the right buttons really, don't I? Now can we see what the mission involves? Oh, we've already gone past some of them and we are going to need a crane. So the Tega is a little bit irrelevant, although we can come and get that repair trailer if need be. So I'm now heading on round. I hope you don't mind the cuts, guys. I'm just trying to get this wrapped up without spending too much time just trundling. I'm trying to get down to this broke repair truck. Or the truck that needs repair. I'm guessing it might be quite a similar gig to the one where we got the Tago. Where we got to repair it and refuel it. I've got the roof rack on. So I do have some fuel. And I think about 300 repair points. I don't know if that will be enough. But since we're here let's go and have a look. We've got that repair trailer. Right where we picked this mission up. So um, if we need to run that round. That's not going to be a huge task is it? And we've gone over. The engine didn't cut out there. So I'm still not actually sure. Whether I've got the autonomous winch on this vehicle or not. But anyway. As usual we're going to cut over this hill. Rather than drive round. I think that's probably sensible. It will save us a little bit of time. And we might find something interesting. Hey, Again look we're, we're just hung up here. Needed a little bit of winch just to move me. I'm not sure what it is with this guy. But he does that. We've got no upgrades for him. Apart from the raised suspension. Bear in mind. He has got better tyres than he came with originally. But uh, we haven't got the engine or anything like that upgraded. So maybe that will make a difference. But once we get into Russia. For real. We shall find out. But ever dependable. What can I say. I'm just having a little look at which is going to be the easiest way round here. And it's not through that tree, is it? <laughs> we were watching Slasher on Netflix while this was being recorded, I must admit. 
So I hope you don't mind the little cuts, but uh, it's easier for me to get these recorded while there's something else going on and then do the narration when it's quiet. It just really makes it, make, ha, gives me more opportunity to get the footage than it does from trying to sit down and do it live, which I do like doing, but I need uh, a room to myself and now accommodation just isn't like that. It's far too sociable for me to have a room to go and hide in. I've got the corridor at the side of the house I make my models in. That's enough territory for me. <laughs> anyway, we're here. So let's see. Can we fix this guy up enough to complete the mission with just the roof rack? Inquiring minds need to know. So the loaf's got 300 repair points on him. Let's see what we've got to do to get this guy fixed up. We've accepted the mission. Always a good starting point repair oh he's really bashed up i guess we've got to fix everything and i remember thank you for the guy who left a comment that if i don't fix the gas tank before i put petrol in it the petrol leaks straight back out that was what was going on when we were trying to um sort the taiga out when we found it now the gmc is full of fuel so you don't have to bring fuel but we're going to need another loaf's worth of repair points so it is going to involve the trailer if you want to do it in one hit I'm just klutzing around trying to refuel the loaf, getting confused as to where I want to get the petrol from and get the petrol to, which happens to me a lot. I'm sorry, what can I say? <laughs> right, so the loaf's work is done here for now, I guess. We may as well leave him here and figure out what to do about these lost bags. It's not favouritism, I swear it's not. The fleet star is on his way down. I've reset the Tager to the garage because without the crane he kind of doesn't really have much to do down here right now. So here we are grabbing the first concrete block which was actually back up the track from where you had to go to pick up the mission. It's a little bit mean is it to make you drive down the map to pick up a mission that then makes you drive back where you just came from to grab something and come back to where you are. I don't know. <laughs> anyway we're dealing with it. So, first load on, no problems. Let's go and get across that river and uh, make sure we can, I guess. The Xbox ate the bit when I picked up the second pallet, what can I say, but you didn't miss much. You've seen me load pallets onto the truck with the crane before, but here's the real test. Can we just get across this river? And it looks like we can, and we've not even put the diff locks on, so that's even better. So, this little river crossing here looks pretty daunting but has caused us no problems whatsoever so far now we're gonna have to start thinking about what we're gonna do to get onto the next map which is island lake and the entrance is not far from where we are so the other reason i'm quite happy to have a few vehicles maybe accumulate down here is that uh we're heading off the map from down here we just need to make sure that as appropriate they've got the right stuff on them to take into the next map and that antenna tower i think includes um two of the three things we need for the first mission into that map which will be handy so anyway we dropped off the first two we're off to get the second two and one's just right up here on the track one's out in the river and uh the question in my mind is that whether I should have picked it up from the other side of the river down the track um, that we passed on the way down. So we're going to get this one up and on. Again, no incidents or accidents. So we'll, we'll get to the river and see how we get on there. Right, so we're just heading out to the river. And as you can see, the bags are right in the middle. And we seem to be coming across the muddy way. It might even be a little bit further across this way. But let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on. And yeah, the track leads onto the track where we picked up the first lost bags. They didn't kind of get washed away. It more likely got exploded into a blast radius so <laughs> around a given point in the woods. This oh, we've kind of gone down a little bit there. That caught me out. Perhaps I should have gone round the other side of the pallet. I seem to have got myself in a lovely hole here and there's nothing around to winch to at all. And the uh, 
the diff locks and low gear is not too encouraging either so we may have got our good friend of fleet star just a little bit stuck still got a little bit of movement so i'm not giving up yet you, if we can just get out of here and back back into the uh, cargo oh come on keep moving keep moving no and there's nothing to winch to luckily we have a loaf nearby and here he comes backing in I don't know if he's gonna do this it is very soft mud here we've kind of islands of slightly firmer mud can we get the guy moving we know the fleet star at least is doing all he can to help come on come on we got full throttle and the winch that's just the winch we're getting dragged back I'm just trying to see what the effect is we'll start driving away a bit now no we seem to be getting more off of dragging on the winch than we are by trying to pull him so let's try that again we're just going to stay here we're spinning our tires to slow down how quickly we're getting dragged backwards and he is coming with us i think once we've got him up out of that hole the job will be a good one and then we can sort out the cargo Because we should be able to grab it with the crane from here without too much problem. Tipping over shouldn't be too much of an issue either. Because we're stuck in the mud. That's what I'm figuring. So we've got a bit of a tilt on. But I'm going to drag the pallet over on the ground. Just reducing the effects of it. Uh, there you go. Reduce the effects of it tipping. We've got it behind the truck. So the weight is in a kind of a safe place and on he drops beautiful restore crane unpack cargo pack cargo carefully because if you hit remove cargo and then you hit the button again without thinking about it you've got to reset the mission because i learned that didn't i we're just going to get the loaf a little bit more out and then yeah get the winch back on we're sinking quite badly there. That might not be a good place to try to drag him from. We can at least get ourselves back out. We've now got the Fleet Star behind us as a winch point. <laughs> but we seem to have winched from the front of the loaf. But that's okay. We're just going to get ourselves out of this little hole and around to the right if we can. Come on, loaf. Trying to grind my way through, but I don't think this is the most efficient way of solving this problem. Even with his low gears. No, we're going to winch ourselves back out of this little hole and drive around it. Oh, we've got one point of engine damage, six points of engine damage. What's that for? Is that because the winch cable's doing a weird thing? That wasn't water damage, was it? No damage, mystery damage who knows no we're not powering our way out of here mr loaf you haven't got the grunt for this at all no sometimes just dragging yourself flicking yourself on the winch like that which is what i'm trying to, or just dislodge you enough to get going but we need to know when we're done so we're going to hit reverse on the manual gearbox remembering to do that winch ourselves out dust ourselves off and start all over again. We're going to get around to the right. We're bringing the Fleet Star with us. <laughs> but the Fleet Star is pretty much out of the mud now. Which may be fortunate. Because I'm not sure the loaf. Because he has, even with his raised suspension, he's quite low. He seems to just be getting dug in here somewhere. There's like a channel of soft mud across the bank here. And his nose is just getting too stuck in for him to pull himself out of. So, you scratch my back, mate, and I shall scratch yours. Let's get the Fleet Star around the front and drag the loaf out in the mud. Fantastic. I'm going to call it an episode there, guys. We will be back ever so soon. Leave it a like. Any comments and suggestions, especially for going on to the next map, will be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch. I know you'll trust me that we got the lost bags back to the hut on the island. No problem. We shall be back soon and continue things from there. For now, take care and goodbye.